On today's show, let's talk about Game 6. How will the Mavericks absolutely win Game 6 against the Thunder? I'll tell you on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Welcome to the Mavericks. NBA champion. He hit it's good. And the Mavericks have won the game. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Mavs your first listen today. The best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform. Give it a five-star review. Like the video on YouTube and comment anything below on YouTube. Let us know your prediction. Do the Mavs win game six? And what do they? How, what's the final score? What do they win the game by? Let us know in the comment section today. I'm going to give you the keys to game six. What do the Mavericks have to do to win game six? Close this out and wait on the winner of Minnesota versus Denver. What do they have to do? Let me know uh, what they have to do, but I'm going to give you my keys in this episode today. We'll talk about some of the things the Thunder have done to make it a little bit easier on the Mavericks. What have they messed up on? What Can any of those things change? We'll talk about Kyrie. Is this, is this, can I, is it, is it can I talk about, could this be the Kyrie game? We've been waiting on it the whole series. Is this the one where he finally breaks through? That would be insane. We'll talk about Luca, what he has to do to win this game. But we got to start here. We got to start here. The Mavericks to win game six have to continue with all the things that have got them to this point. What has got them to this point? The Mavericks have played insane defense. We talked about it yesterday. We talked about the things that have made this Mavericks defense a high level and what I think is now a championship level defense. They have had their scheme intact. They have pulled the right levers on that scheme. They've put a wing on Chet Holmgren. They've allowed some of the role players to shoot more threes. They've sold out on some of the other threes. SGA, Jayla Williams, not getting as many three-point attempts as some of the other role players, which is not good for them. And the Mavs have sold out on that. The Mavs have limited the amount of three-point attempts that the, the Thunder have taken. The Mavericks have limited the amount of fast break opportunities that the Thunder have gotten. They've also limited the amount of uh, quality fast break attempts that the, Ma- that the Thunder have gotten as well. The Mavs have to keep this defensive intensity throughout the entire game. And I think that that's super important because you can't let your foot off the gas. What happened in game four? Game four is a great example of when the Mavericks had this level and played a really great level throughout most of the game. And you go, man, we're feeling really good about this Mavericks team. Feeling they outplayed this team for 44 minutes. And all of a sudden, the last five minutes of the game, you go, what just happened <laughs> in this game? And the Mavericks held the Thunder in game four to 20 points in the first quarter, 23 points in the second quarter, 22 points in the third quarter. And the fourth quarter came around and they allowed 35 points and they lost by four. Huge, huge missed opportunity in that one. And it was because the def- defensive intensity lacked. The Mavericks cannot let up on that end. They can't give daylight to this Thunder team. As much as the Mavericks have d- played better than this Thunder team, have been better, their defense has looked much better than the Thunder's offense, this Thunder offense is still a good offense. They can break through. We've seen it. You've seen it in moments in this series. It's been moments and not full games, but you've seen it. One of the key, one of the other keys, limit the Mavs, limit the Thunder's three-point shooting. That's part of their scheme. That's part of what they really want to do. But the Thunder, in some of their losses, they've shot 33%, 33%. They shot 25% in game five. They lost all those games. One of the games they won, they shot 46% in game one and won. Limit the quality attempts they get. Limit the amount of attempts they get. And that's super massive for this Mavericks team. Limit those three-point attempts, all that. Continue the defensive intensity. And so who's the defensive intensity on? Is it on coach? Is it on the stars? Is it on the wings? Is it on the centers? It's kind of one of those cop-out answers, but I kind of think it's on everybody. It's on everybody to sort of keep keep everything in front of them. It starts with the stars, I think, because if the stars start lacking, we've seen what happens when Luka decides to take a step back on defense or decide to not put as much intensity into that end of the floor, and that's when he can really get in trouble. When he gets caught up with the refs, when he gets caught up with other things around the game, doesn't stay focused on defense and he just, you know, doesn't, he forgets a rotation or he's slow on a rotation or he funnels somebody to the center, but doesn't funnel them correctly. And so he funnels them too far into the middle and then they get a floater or like a, you know, a better floater or something like that. And that's when the defensive intensity can really short circuit, can really like wear down 
And then all of a sudden you see an opening for the other team. So it does start with the stars. It starts with all that. It also, the defensive intensity also kind of starts with the Mavs not turning the ball over on offense and getting lazy on that end too. The Mavericks not giving the Thunder too many fast break opportunities is on their offense as much as it is their defense too. So I think that's massive for them. That's one key. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. The next key, I think, can Luca just play a normal basketball game? A normal game for Luca. I said this before game five. The Mavericks just need Luca to play a normal Luca game. That's a high level for anyone else. It's a normal level for Luca. Game one, 19 points, five turnovers, shot 31.6% from the field, six of 19 from the field. They lost the game. Game four, 18 points, seven turnovers, shot 30% from the field. They lost the game. In the games he shot 30 or 31%, they have lost the game. In the games when he has shot 52, 54, 41%. They have won the game. Is it that simple? Is it that simple that it is literally just if Luka shoots the ball fine or well, they win the game? Honestly, it's one of my keys. Luka's just got to play a normal game. He hits those little floaters in the lane that he can get. He hits a couple extra threes here and there, and it's a big difference in this Mavs team because of the volume Luka takes. That field goal percentage matters a lot because you're talking about the difference in let's go game one to game two. Game one, he shot 31%. They lose the game. Game two, he shot 52%. They win the game. What's the difference? He took 19 attempts in game one. He took 21 in game in game two. He made five more shots. That could be 11, 12, 13 points. That's a huge difference. It ended up being 10 points, but it could be that big of a difference. So Luca's field goal percentage does matter a ton. This seems so obvious, right? Like it seems so obvious that if Luca makes more shots, they win the game. But honestly, that's what it's coming down to. In playoff basketball, everything wears down, especially on offense. I was literally just talking about this with David Locke. We're on our retreat. This is why I'm, I'm, I've been away. This is why I'm still, in, uh, I'm still in like a vacation house here on our lockdown retreat. We're talking all about the future of the network and all kinds of stuff. But I was talking with David Locke while we were watching the end of Mavs Thunder in game five. And he talks about how the offense just, can, just breaks down in a playoff series, completely breaks down just to the studs. Just like you break down a house. Like if I decided to, to tear this room out and I wanted to extend this wall back here and I wanted to make it, you know, like an open concept or whatever. If I wanted to do that, I'd have to tear it all down to the studs, right? Like tear the drywall down, tear the windows down, tear the doors down, all that. Tear it all down to the studs. That's what happens in playoff offense because defenses figure out your tendencies, figure out what you want to do. And then they try to limit those things and then you make adjustments and then you just keep limiting and limiting and limiting. And then what does it become? Becomes Luka one-on-one, becomes SGA one-on-one, becomes Kyrie one-on-one, becomes James Harden one-on-one against Luka at the end of the Clippers series. Like, it just becomes a one-on-one game. It becomes one star versus another star and back and forth. And so the stars have got to show through. And Luka's the first one. Kyrie has been limited in this series. We'll talk about him. Could this be the Kyrie game? But Luka has to play normal basketball. That's all you're asking for him. Luka, just play normal bas- just play a normal level of basketball. Don't turn the ball over too many times. In game one, he turned it over five times. In game four, he turned it over seven times. Too many. In the wins, he turned it over once, four times, and three times. Limit the turnovers. Hit more shots. (laughs) That's it. That's the basketball knowledge you come to for lockdown maps. Luca, hit more shots. But he's just got to play a normal basketball game. That's like it's it's also not asking. It's also, I make this point because. I want you to understand that it's not asking too much. It's not asking a lot. Yes, Luca is fighting through these injuries. He's fighting through this right knee, this left ankle, this lower back. He's fighting through all different kinds of injuries right now. And so it is hard. And that's why we're just asking for a normal Luca game because he's fighting through these injuries. He's working through them, but he can get there. And if he can get there, the Mavs will win. That's it. That's what it comes down to. Honestly, the whole thing should just make you feel a little better about game six and make you feel more confident about this team. Hopefully, we're feeling more confident about Kyrie Irving after game six, and I'll tell you why I think this could be the Kyrie Irving game. We'll talk about that coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Hiring is easy when you have so many qualified candidates, and LinkedIn has more than a billion professionals. It can, make, it can become the best place to hire for you, so go check it out. Uh, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. They do it all while making the process easy and intuitive. 
everybody knows that small business owners are wearing so many different hats. LinkedIn knows that better than anybody. And you might not have the time or the resources to hire or put a long pro like a long hiring process. And you know that hiring is the most important part of your business. You want to bring in the right people so you don't have to coach a bad person that you brought in to somebody to, to correct them all the time. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So go check it out. They're constantly trying to find ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write your job descriptions out. I know that could really help a lot of companies. Maybe the company I'm working for right now. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free terms and conditions. They do apply. Thanks for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. We appreciate each and every one of you. Listen on any podcast platform. Take us with you on the road five days a week, seven days throughout the playoffs. We're continuing on. Mavs Thunder. Tomorrow could be the last day that we talk about this series. That's wild. Or it could go to game seven, and that could be wild too. But I'm confident the Mavericks can win game six, and I'm confident because they just need a normal Luka game. They just need to play the level of defense they've been playing, the intensity of defense they've been playing. And if they get those two things, that would be awesome. And I think they can win the game, honestly, with just those two things. And all the things that have, have come in every other game. I think they can win the game with just those two keys. But what would be great, and maybe I'm asking for a little bit here, could this be the Kyrie game? We've been waiting for a Kyrie game. Game one, he had 20 points. He only took 14 shots. He had only taken 14 shots like three times all season with the Mavericks. It was a very weird thing. Game two, and I was like, okay, well, he's never going to take 14 shots again. He's just got to take more. Game two, he only took eight shots <laughs> and nine points, and the Mavs win the game. So that didn't really make any sense either. He had 11 assists. The Thunder are really sending extra help and all that to, to you know, ward off Kyrie in some of his attempts. And so he made the right basketball plays. He passed out to the right guys and all that. Kyrie is making the right basketball plays in these instances. None of this about, oh, Kyrie hasn't had a good scoring series and all that. None of that is even really saying, at least from my point of view, None of that is even saying that Kyrie is doing the wrong things or that Kyrie is not uh, doing, making the right basketball plays. He is, but they just need more from him at some points. They definitely did in game one, and they definitely did in game four. In game two, he had 22 points, seven assists. He took 17 shots. The Mavs won the game. Felt like, all right, great. They got, they got a lot out of Kyrie in that game. Uh, it wasn't even like a, a great Kyrie game, but they got enough out of him. And these are low-scoring games too, so you're not asking him to really score 30 or anything like that. But game four, he scores nine points. He has nine assists. They sell out again on those. He only takes 11 shots. And you just go, man, oh, we just need more from Kyrie at this point. And then game five happens, and he scores 12 points, four assists, only takes 11 shots. The Mavs win the game. So Kyrie is not the key to this series so far, apparently. His defense has been key. We talked about that yesterday. Gave him a lot of credit for that. But apparently his defense, like, but apparently his offense is not needed because they won it in game uh, five when he only scored 12 points and only four assists, two on 11 shots. But could this be the Kyrie game? We've seen it a lot in series, and especially in playoff series, and I think against this Thunder team, and I think they're uniquely positioned to allow this to happen. Everything breaks down. I talked about it. You break it down to the studs and all that. I think a team also like the Thunder, there's a breaking point. I think there will be a breaking point with this Thunder. Maybe it'll come in game six. Maybe it will be game seven. But... This Thunder team is young. They're inexperienced. We've seen that inexperience shine in this series. They won game four, and they looked like a real veteran team and all that. But then game five, they showed their inexperience in that. And some of the other games, they've showed their inexperience too. Where something happens where they lose a player, they lose Giddy, they lose, you know, uh, Jalen Williams is not as effective, and they can't recover from those. They can't adjust. They can't overcome those, those certain instances. I think game six could be the game where – it breaks down, and all of a sudden, Kyrie has like 35, and we go, oh my gosh, where has this Kyrie been this whole time? It's on the Thunder's defense that breaks down at a certain point, and I think that could happen in game six. I'm really looking for that, and I'm curious to see if Kyrie's the one that really makes that happen. It could not. It could be somebody else. It could be Derek Jones, or what if it's Tim, or Exum, or you know whoever else, but it would be awesome for Kyrie especially if he could have like a 35-point game where he shoots the ball really efficiently, he's getting a bunch of open shots because the Thunder are just, their defense is just breaking down because they finally hit their breaking point. And they can hit their breaking point because Kyrie is 13-0 in closeout games in his career, in the playoffs. Some of that is thanks to LeBron, sure. But in the, in the Clippers series, game six, the Mavs could close him out, and they did. They figured it out, they closed him out, they played the game that they wanted to play, and boom, they got that. 
So I'm hopeful. I'm not expecting, but I'm hopeful that a Kyrie game could happen if the Thunder break down and Kyrie finally has a, a good shooting Kyrie game and uh, finally has a game where he just you know breaks down their defense, figures something out, and then boom, goes off for 30, something like that. The last thing that I want to talk about here today is that the Thunder, I think, have done a couple of things, and a couple of things have happened to the Thunder that have made them that have made it a little bit easier for the Mavericks to win some of these games. You know, it's not all just the Mavericks being awesome and all that. I think the Thunder are struggling in a couple of key areas. When the offense does get break, broken down to its studs, like we just been talking about with the Mavs side, SGA on the Thunder side, he hasn't been really an ex, like a, an incredible playmaker or a three point killer, or like an insane defender either, right? SGA, we talked about yesterday, the amount of threes that he's taking. He's only taken 15 threes so far in this series. That's not a lot. James Harden and, and Paul George took 49 and 47 threes in the six games against the Mavericks. Lou Dort is leading the Thunder with most threes taken. He's taken twice the amount of threes that SGA has. The game is not all about threes, but it does give you more than one point. It gives, gives you one more point than a two-point shot. So as much as SGA has been excellent at breaking down the Mavericks with his mid-range shots. He's been killing them on that end. He's been absolutely great at that. Got to give him more sometime. And you got to give him more than just 30 or 32 points every time. But that's what he does. He just comes out. He executes. He does what he does. If you're going to be an MVP candidate, you've got to give him a little bit more sometimes. And apparently this Thunder team needs more to beat this Mavericks team. SGA's averaging 7.2 assists. He is playmaking a lot for them, but... They need more. They need more from their star. They're not getting it from Jalen Williams. They're not getting it from anyone else. Giddy was one of their playmakers, and Giddy's just been completely taken out of this series. And so all of a sudden you look and you're like, all right, we just need somebody to be even more of a playmaker. And SG hasn't really been breaking him down that much. Seven assists is really good. That's good for him especially. But in a series where you're not getting enough, they need more. He scored 92 points in game five. Mentioned this a couple times, but Jalen Williams of the Thunder is giving them nothing, basically. He has not given them what they need at all as their second quote-unquote star. In the regular season, Jalen Williams, I did this yesterday, I'm doing it again because it's a wild stat to me. Jalen Williams averaged 19.1 points. He shot 54% from the field, 43% from three in 31 minutes. Not a lot. 19 points doesn't sound like that many, but it's only 31 minutes, and he's shooting really efficiently. Crazy percentages there. In the playoffs against the Mavericks so far, 16 points, so three less than the regular season. 40% from the, from the field, which is 14 percentage points lower. 31% from three, which is 11 point, uh, percentage points lower. In 38 minutes, he's playing seven more minutes, scoring three less points, and doing it way less efficiently. He is not giving them enough. What if I told you, this is our favorite 30 for 30 game. What if I told you there was one player in a series that was averaging 16 points a game on 41% from the field, and there was another player averaging 19 points on 49% from the field. Which player would you think was better? <laughs> the one averaging like three more points a game on better efficiency, too. That other player is P.J. Washington. P.J. Washington has outplayed Jalen Williams thoroughly in this series. It's one of the reasons why the Mavs are up 3-2. Kyrie has been great defending Jalen Williams. I think the moment has been really big for Jalen Williams. He's, he's, what, in his second year? I think it's just been a little bit too big for him. Uh, he relies on the ISOs, and the Mavericks have done a really good job to limit those and to make sure that he's not get he's not comfortable and not getting the exact shots that he wants. And so I think that's something that's really benefited from the Mavericks. And uh, I think that Jalen Williams not giving them a lot has really helped the Mavericks to get up to a 3-2 lead, basically. The last thing. Chet has not killed the Mavericks shooting-wise. This is actually really big. Chet can be a really good shooter, and I think Chet struggles with something. Like, he struggles with the can-do-it-all syndrome. He struggles with do-it-all syndrome so much. He's got so much in front of him. He can dribble. He can pass. He can shoot. He can post up. He could drive. He could, he could do anything, basically. He could run a pick-and-roll. He could set a pick, and, a pick uh, you know, and, and roll. He can do so many different things. And so when so many different options are presented in front of a basketball player, you just kind of get stuck. Like, what do I do right here? And then he also has really struggled, and I think Jalen Williams has struggled, and I think the rest of the Thunder have kind of struggled with this idea of we had this great flow during the regular season. We won 57 games. We were a top five offense and defense. We were really great. Our, our coach won coach of the year. Our best player was, you know, number two MVP, and we all campaigned for him and all really wanted him to get it. 
We've got commercials. We've got this dog mentality. We're all barking in a, in a huddle. We're like, you know, spurning the national reporters for the local reporters in the post game. We're like, we have this great flow. Like every, we have this great flow, but they didn't want to mess it up. They're exactly like in the office when Jim Halpert, when, when Michael Scott is gone, they're trying to find the new manager and they've got this company Sabre and they're trying to figure out who's the new manager. And, you know, I think it was uh, the Will Ferrell character. He gets in the accident. He leaves. He's, he's in the hospital. And then they have no manager for like a couple weeks. They have no manager. And all of a sudden, they're like, they're doing really well. And they're, everybody's doing the right thing. And everybody's, you know, they're selling paper. And they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and all that. And everybody clocks in and clocks out. And it's totally fine. And so the CEO of the company calls Jim and is like, hey, would you like to be the acting manager until we find the other manager? And Jim goes, you know what? We've got a really good thing going here. I don't want to mess this up by stepping into this role and by messing up our flow. And so the CEO says, well, okay, cool. And she goes to Dwight Schrute and she picks Dwight Schrute as the manager and then he shoots the ground and he shoots the floor with his gun that he carries around and insanity happens. That's exactly what's happening with this Thunder team right now is that, that uh, Chet is Jim Halpert. Chet has all these tools that he could offer to the, the, the team, but he doesn't want to mess up the flow of what was happening with this Thunder team. And so he's not being more aggressive. He's not being more assertive. He's not trying to do more for this team because they had a flow that really worked for them in the regular season. So he's trying to stick to that same kind of flow. This is just what I've seen in this series so far. And one of the big things has been his shooting. The Mavericks have really struggled with shooting bigs. Miles Turner killed him. Obviously, Jokic killed him. Bunch of other centers have killed them when they shoot and when they shoot, especially mid-range jumpers because the Mavericks will give you those mid-range jumpers and they'll give them to you with Kyrie guarding you, with you know, Derek Jones Jr. guarding you with somebody smaller guarding you, Tim, you know, whoever else is on the court, Exum. Chet has barely taken any mid-range shots at all. It's not really part of his game, but he hasn't taken really any at all. And three-point shooting-wise, he's five of 20. He's not taken a lot of threes. He's taken like four a game, but he's only making like one a game. So he has not really hurt them shooting-wise. He's not been assertive enough. He's a rookie, so it's like, what do you expect from him? But he's a number two pick. It's his technically his second year. He didn't play his first year, but you they need more from him. He is their third most talented player. He is going to be, you know, I don't know, between him and Jalen Williams, I guess he's there, one of them is going to be their second best player. But he's probably going to be an all – Chet is probably going to be an all-star in this league. He's a very good player. He had a chance for rookie of the year against Weminyama. But he needs to give them more if they want to win this series. It's just kind of where they are right now. And I think that he struggles with not wanting to mess up the flow – and he's, he hasn't killed the Mavericks shooting-wise, and that's helped the Mavericks a lot. There you go. Those are my keys. Those are the things that Thunder have been doing that I think have helped the Mavericks. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section on YouTube. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked on Mavs. Peace out.